This is a tutorial on how to execute kernels in OpenCL Studio. At this point, it's assumed that you have already seen the uh, introductory videos and that you know the basic features of the editor. So in order to execute a kernel, we first have to create an OpenCL program. And we'll do this via right mouse click here on the OpenCL subtree and choose a program. So now if you click on the code tab over here, you can see that this program already contains a predefined kernel called CL kernel. And now in order to execute this kernel, we go to the script tab, we drag and drop our program into a script processor, and for now we'll implement the on-time event handler. And the first thing we have to do here is get a handle to the kernel inside of our program. And we'll do this by declaring a local variable here. Let's call it kernel equals. And now we have to go to the program object and call a function called get kernel. And this one takes a string or the kernel name as an argument. So right now we'll have a handle to our kernel. And the next step is, is to call the appropriate OpenCL function to execute the kernel. And for this we use the CL package. And here you see a number of uh, OpenCL functions. The name and the signatures are very much the same as uh, the ones in the OpenCL specifications. So once, we, once you understand the OpenCL uh, docs, you'll be able to understand what these functions do here. And for now we need a function called CL NQ and the range kernel. And the first argument to this function is our kernel. The second argument is the uh, number of work dimensions. And the third argument for now is just uh, the global work size. And I will just pick a value here. So uh, the next step is to compile the program. And I will go back to our scene here and we'll hit play. And now the kernel is executing. And you can see this because the property sheet down here uh, shows you profiling information about how long it takes to execute this kernel. So basically, if there's no errors and uh, you see a red bar here in the profiling information, uh, your kernel is running. So next, we'll pass an OpenCL buffer as an argument to our kernel. So the first thing we have to do is create a buffer. So I'll do it under the subtree here again, a right mouse click, I will insert a buffer. And now down here in the property sheet, you can see the attributes of this buffer, dimension, uh, the data type, as well as various access uh, flags. So in order to pass this buffer to our kernel, we'll now go back to the script tab over here. And I will now use a function called clsetKernelArc to specify the parameters to the kernel. And the first argument here is a kernel. The second one is which argument we're, we're passing. And now we need a handle to our buffer. So we can type in opencl.clbuffer and now we need to call a, a, a function on this buffer object that returns the actual memory object we can pass to our OpenCL kernel. Now this getBuffer function, you will find this in various different types of nodes in the tree view, will have some sort of getBuffer function that returns the appropriate OpenCL object which you can pass to kernels. We'll see examples of this in additional tutorials. So we'll now have to go back to our kernel and we'll have to change it so it accepts that buffer as a first argument. So type it global. Uh, the data type of our buffer was a, a CL char. So up here we're now going to go global char star and I'll just call this buffer. So compile the kernel, go back to our scene, hit play. And as you can see, the kernel is running. So we have now passed the buffer to our OpenCL kernel. So next, let's pass a single floating point value to our kernel. So we'll go back to the script tab here. We'll add an additional uh, kernel argument. And now, because we want to pass a single floating point value, we actually have to specify the size of uh, the data type we're going to pass. And for that, we're going to use go back to the CL package. And after the code completion pops up here, you see uh, in the first tab, you see all the function the package publishes. And the second tab, you see all the constants and, and, and uh, members. And here we have type specifiers. So we'll just pick CL float. And that means that we're now passing a floating point value to our kernel. So that we have done that, we compile the change. We have to go back to our kernel now and add a second parameter. That will just be a float and we'll call that val1. Compile our change. Okay, so now let's go back here and there's a third parameter we're now going to pass a uh, vector of uh, four floating point numbers. So we will add another call to set kernel arc. 
And now I'm choosing the, as a specifier, I will choose CL flow 4. So until now, everything looks the same as before, except that now we have to specify four floating point numbers as parameters, and we're going to use a Lua table for this. So you have to use a table notation, and I'm just going to add four numbers here. Okay, apply the change. Oh, there was a syntax error here. And now we'll go back to the kernel and add another parameter, and this time it'll just be flow four. Well, too. Okay. So next I will show you how to pass a local memory buffer to the kernel. So I will just add a fourth parameter on here. I'm going to go local and we just make it a char star. Okay. I'm not going to talk too much about the different uh, types of memory in OpenCL, but all you need to know is how now to specify this fourth parameter from our scripting interface. So I will just go cl.clz kernel arc again. And all we do specify here now is just the size. That's the size of the local buffer we're passing to our kernel. Okay, we'll compile the change. We'll go back to our scene just to have a look whether our kernel is still running. And yes, it is. Uh, we still see profiling information, so everything is fine. So we'll now show you how to pass an OpenGL buffer to our kernel. So OpenCL has been designed uh, with, the, with the ability in mind that an OpenGL, an OpenCL kernel can access uh, buffers in the OpenGL rendering pipeline. And I will now show you how to do that. So first we'll go to our OpenGL tab now and we will insert a, a sphere. And this sphere now consists in the tree view of a, a vertex set and the triangle mesh. So we'll not talk too much about the triangle mesh right now, we'll just focus on the vertex set. So down here in the attributes, you can see that uh, every vertex has a coordinate, uh, there is a normal buffer, there is a texture buffer, and there is a, a tangent space. And OpenCL Studio uh, actually computes all of these values for you uh, when, it, when it creates this, this object. So now let's go ahead and pass our vertex buffer, which is uh, the XYZ coordinates, to our OpenCL kernel. So what we'll have to do here, I'll declare a local variable, let's call it VB, and now we have to access our vertex set and go opengl dot vertices and now colon. And now we have a, a number of get buffer functions here that will return the various buffers and we're interested in the vertex buffer. Okay. And now we add a fourth parameter to our kernel. Again, using CL set kernel arc. And all we have to, all we can pass here is just the vertex buffer. Now, one thing you have to do before you can pass an OpenGL buffer to an OpenCL kernel, you have to acquire that buffer. This is just part of the way, uh, open, the way OpenCL has been specified. And for that, there is a function right here. It's called acquire GL objects. We pass our vertex buffer. And similarly, once we're done with it, we also have to release it. And there is a function release GL objects. And we call this as well. Okay. So I'll now compile the script. Now we'll now go over to our kernel and add the fifth parameter here. And we're going to uh, be a global. Now the data type of our vertex buffer, you can find out what that is by looking at the vertex set. And right here, the first entry of the buffers, you can see it's uh, four floating point values. So we can just go float for star and we'll call it VB. Okay, so let's compile the script, go back to the scene, hit play, and as you can see, our kernel is running. We have just passed uh, the vertex buffer of this sphere to the kernel, and theoretically inside the kernel, we could now change the vertices, and this change would be reflected right away in the rendering right here. And so that's what we'll do right now. So we'll now add some code to our kernel that will scale the vertices of this sphere here according to a, a value that we're going to specify with a slider. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the GUI tab, add a slider right here. And now we're going to go back to our script tag. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the value of the slider here through the, our first uh, float variable that we specified earlier. So instead of passing a, a value, I'm just going to go GUI dot slider colon get position. 
So our variable val1 will now have the slider position. And one more thing I have to do now is you want to execute that kernel once for every vertex in, in, that, in that vertex set. And right now the, we have hard-coded the value in here is 256. That's the number of times this kernel will be executed, but really we want it to be the dimensions of our vertex buffer. So we can go mem.dim, pass our buffer, and dimension zero. And we'll talk about the mem package more in future tutorials. For now, it's just important to understand that this will now be the dimensions of our vertex buffer. I'll apply our change. And now let's go back to our kernel code. So this kernel is now executed once for every vertex. And I can now just declare a variable here. This equals get global ID zero. So this will basically just give me the, the, the index of the particular kernel, which we can use as uh, our index into our vertex buffer. Okay. And now I'm going to scale the X, Y, and Z coordinates equals, oops. Uh, 1.0. So I'm just going to work in um, our, our val1 variable here that will contain the value of our slider. So, okay. Compile the change. Go back to our scene, hit play, and now let's have a look what, what happens here. Remove the slider. So as you can see, our sphere is growing. So we're just basically changing the, the rate of growth as you'd expect that. So just quickly to sum up here, we have passed the value from the slider on the GUI here, as well as the vertex sets from, from an OpenGL rendering pipeline to our OpenCL kernel, which then changes the size of the sphere. So at this point, I quickly like to go back to our script processor here, and let's have a look at this program register. Currently, we are only, uh, we're always calling this script in the on time event. This means that this kernel executes at every time step. But realistically, we only need to execute this kernel when the value of our slider changes. So what we'll do is we'll remove the whole script from the on time script event handler and we'll put it into the on compute event handler. And then we'll drag and drop our slider from the tree view into here. And in the on move event, we're going to call uh, the compute function of our program. It has a compute function. And the effect it has that this function call will eventually trigger the uncompute event handler to be called. So this is a much better way of structuring uh, uh, this particular pro uh, program. And we're also saving quite a bit of performance here. So let's go over here to the scene, start our simulation. And as we'd expect, it still works as before, except the kernels is only being called when we actually move the slider. Okay, so this ends this tutorial on executing kernels. Um, there will be additional tutorials that teach you how to uh, manage different types of buffers and how to uh, manage uh, structure definitions.